but I listed who could be the potential wild cards in the Oilers lineup. If we had the Oilers lines, maybe we could flash those up right now as well. But I think it's fair to assume that like the 13 spots that are going to be available out of camp are kind of spoken for in the forward group. Like the only one you can make an argument of is the fourth line center spot with Derek Ryan. Maybe he loses that job in camp. Maybe. But even then, someone has to be like like better than him. They can't just like be the same as him. They might even honor it, honor him to start the year. They might. They might just keep him for a little bit. Um, this once again, no Vander Kane. And yeah, no Vander Kane in this lineup. If Vander Kane is in the lineup, then Corey Perry is your thirteenth forward, and that's your group of thirteen. If he's not, then maybe the thirteenth forward spot is uh, ends up being open. The at some point, injuries are going to hit. At some sure. point, slumps are going to come. All of that. So the four players that I had written down that I think could make an impact at the NHL level next year or play a role with the Oilers, could wear an Oilers sweater. I had Lane Peterson. I had Ruby Jarventi. Mm-hmm. I had Matt Savoy. And I had Noah Phil. No James Hamlin. No James Hamlin. Okay. You can throw James Hamlin in there. I think I will. You think there's a chance he's 4C? I think he would go ahead of um, Philp to start the year. To start the year, correct. Yeah. And then I think I didn't yeah. even include Raphael Lavoie in there, actually. Lavoie, yeah. So they got like so that's the thing. We got like six guys who could really battle for it for a spot. Yeah, exactly. or for the first call up, like something. Yeah. And I do think it, it's a little dependent on like again, knock on wood here. Like I'm not trying to wi- will anything into existence, but like if Victor Arvidsson is out for four months at one point. Yeah. If he goes down in December and it's a four month injury and Matt Savoy's a point of game, Matt Savoy could get that call up. If Derek Ryan looks slow and they need a boost, Lane Peterson, I think, gets that call up. Or maybe it's James Hamblin who gets that call up. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. I, I just, the speed of Derek Ryan is going to be what's going to be a problem. Yeah. Bother him. It's going to be a problem. And uh, it's not even purely him. It's the fact Corey Perry is probably going to be locked next to him most of the time. Mm hmm. It's not going to help. So if they want to add some speed, I would consider if, Hamlin. If I had to rank them in terms of like most, so most likely to, to play for the Oilers next year uh, at all in out of that group of, we'll include Lavoie. So it's a group of five, most likely to play for the Oilers next year and most amount of games like they could get. I have Peterson at one. I would go Lavoie to, I would go Jarventi three, Savoy four, Phil five. You're not putting Hamlin in there. I just don't see the upside play there, but okay. I would maybe go... I slot him one above Phil because he could get a call up earlier. One Savoy. You think he has the best chance of playing for the Oilers next year out of that group? 100%. I think they're going to commit to developing him. He's a seventh overall pick, ninth overall pick. They're putting him down in Baco as a centerman. I don't think they're there's a spot for him to selling, be a center. They're literally selling his jersey right now in the other store. If you walk past the other store, it's Connor McDavid, Drysaddle, Bouchard, Savoy. Yeah, but that they screen printed one or press, he pressed one jersey into it. One? There's four rows. I swear, he's he's number one for me. I think it's him. Um, I would go Lavoie, probably Pedersen, Javenti. I would say Hamlin and then Philp. I think Philp is just going to need the time. Yeah, I, I can kind of see that. Yeah, that'd be my only one. But I could see him. I could see him playing. I think Le- Savoy will, be, will force the Oilers to make a decision at the deadline that gets him in the lineup every year. Just the way they're talking, though, they want him to be a center. He's going to go start as a center, be developed as a center. Mm-hmm. I So Derek Ryan goes down. It's not him coming up. It's Peterson or Hamblin. I don't know. I could see him mixing it in. They're not going to bring him up to be a fourth-line center. But the one other thing, too, it's not all about games. Like, yes, of course, when he gets called up, you want him to play. But being around two of the best centers in the world is also going to be incredibly helpful. And it doesn't have to be a regular thing, but I think they'll want it to be around. The others have proven over their time that that's kind of what they want, is their best players to be in Edmonton. Holloway, Broberg, even Bouchard. Like, remember that Cole video? We were like, send this guy down. He's literally doing nothing. Yeah. And, like, different staff now. Like, who knows what Stan Bowman wants to do and uh, and Jeff Jackson as well. But that's kind of been the, the image of the others for a while. 
It's your best best player seems to just be around all the time. He needs to play though wherever he's going to be. Yeah. So and that's why, like again, if they were if they had said and if the messaging was we view him as a winger, we think his path mm-hmm. to the NHL is as a winger. Then I would be like, yeah, I could see him getting the first call up. And and if he gets a chance, if it's an Arvidsson that goes down or a Skinner or Hyman or whoever, if it's a top six winger that goes down, yeah, I think it's Savoy. You you bring him right up. And I think if he gets called up, he doesn't go back down. I think it's one of those. Yeah, I, guess I just think it's a very niche situation where he gets that call up versus Peterson can win the job out of camp. Peterson can be the bottom six cop. I think Jarventi, if it's Perry is down or Perry's not looking good Brown or goes down. Yeah, like that, yeah. One of those, anyone in the bottom six goes down. I think it's Peterson or Jarventi and they come up and they give you a good few weeks and they go back down to Bakersfield. Yeah, I, I totally agree. They're lucky. Like a lot of these guys have NHL experience. Yeah. Like out of all those guys, we said the only one that hasn't played an NHL game is Noah Phillip. Correct. Which is nice to have. The blue yeah. line is going to be a problem if anyone goes down. Well, yeah, like I didn't I even include Josh the blue Brown. line in this. Um, they have, like, they have depth. Carrick can play in yeah, the I NHL. Carrick, which is nice. Stetcher can play in the NHL. Brown can play in the NHL. He's worn an NHL jersey before. Mm-hmm. Played in games. Broberg's the wild card, though, because if nice. Broberg is the Broberg we saw, like we got in fact infatuated with him during the playoffs. Yep. It was eight games or nine games or whatever it was. Like, yeah, he didn't do it for the whole playoff run. And even if he did, I'd be sitting there going, can he do it for a full season? So Broberg's a wild card because if he's what we saw in those last nine, ten games in the playoffs, then we're good. My biggest wild card on the blue line, Troy Stetcher. Because you think there's a shot he plays more than we think? I just, you know, he you never got the chance last year, right? Yeah. Like. I I'm curious to see if he can take that a role on the right side. Like, what is he? What is he going to be? Is he going to yeah. be the guy that can kind of help out Donald Nurse a little bit and and yeah. do what he's obviously doesn't have the size that Broberg has, but he's a guy that's played over f- close to 500 games, whatever mm-hmm. he may be. He's been around for a while, and the others want to sign him for two years if he was just going to be the seven eighth defenseman. I think they legit see a role for him. That's fair. Is he Philip Lawson? I hope he's better. (laughs) What's up, Nation Citizens? If you like that video, then you need to be subscribed to the Oilers Nation YouTube. Podcasts, live shows, exclusive interviews and analysis, everything you need from your favorite voices at Oilers Nation. And you don't want to miss any of it, so hammer that subscribe button.